this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're doing a review of Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, and you know, which is a, we're, we're, it's a real fun thing. that It's called a movie by committee. Well, you know, part of it is we've been reviewing 3D movies. And so I wanted to see this one for several different reasons. Because one is before we saw the movie, it's one of those movies that I thought probably should have been in 3D, but wasn't in 3D. Oh, because uh, Westerns, I mean, I actually... Was that in, would have been unique for Western to be in 3D. Well, no, I did uh, I think the Charge of Feather River, which is, uh, we know, with, um, with uh, Frank Lovejoy and um, and Guy Madison. It was a 3D movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and but I make fun of the fact that it was a 3D movie done with the type of equipment we're using right now. And, <laughs> and uh, we, we were talking... Uh, it, it, there is the same famous scene in that movie is when they're taking their rifles and knocking uh, bows and uh, lances. You know, they're just using them to knock them out of the way. That, that they've laughed at that for so long because they were throwing it at them. Oh, and you started out in western movies. Yeah, first. Thing I mean, ever, literally. The first started. thing I ever did was a western. So my father was a my father was a cavalry officer before he became a tank officer. And basically, when they retired the cavalry, my father brought his. Um, horses back with him. They let him keep his stra- uh, you know, a uh, group of horses. And I, I grew up riding those cavalry horses, so and I had my own saddles and my I had my own tack to go, you know, I could do a western. I could show up with my own horse and my own gear, so it meant that I could do a lot more, but uh, this was a western of which no one other than Harrison Ford had ever been involved with a western. Oh, no. I remember at the beginning of the movie, Buck Taylor and his sons were they were they've been involved with western because his family is like my family his family goes back to the uh, late 1920s with dub taylor yeah so you know part of it as you mentioned this is a movie by committee yeah how much do you think that had an effect on it number one being a movie by committee and two that nobody else had been involved in a western other than what uh the taylors harrison ford and Oh, and Ron Howard. And Ron Howard. Ron Howard did westerns when he was younger, folks. I mean, he did like Wagon Train. He did all the TV westerns, and he did feature films. So, but Ron Howard absolutely had nothing to do with this movie because Ron Howard would have seen... His name was on it. I know, but he, he Imagine Entertainment's name was on it also. But yeah. it was also exactly produced by Steven Spielberg. And, this was, and it was a DreamWorks production, and DreamWorks is sort of going down the toilet anymore. Well, see, part of it is Ron Howard would have known better, Yeah. right? Harrison Ford knew better, knew better, but he wasn't the one directing it. I know. So Harrison Ford, okay, here's a trick is, I, 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 I get hung up on the fact that my father was a second unit man and my mother, my grandmother was a script supervisor. There was neither of the above on that movie. <laughs> well, you watch it through different eyes. I know. I sat there and watched it. A script supervisor would have simply pointed out that uh, you can't continually fire nine shots out of the same gun while you're on camera. Oh, yeah, just a minor issue. And they would have pointed out the fact that that guns and holsters miraculously disappeared and reappeared in the same shots. Or they, oh, wait a minute, we didn't see any bullets. I think I only saw one gun being reloaded like once or twice. I know, and, and, another, and another thing, the... Uh, the second, this is where second unit people would have came in and where they did. Uh, they were using like peacemakers and can- they were using like these things were cannons. When you fired one of them off, you could hear it for a mile away. They they hit the walls and things like they were like twenty uh, twos. Why do you say twenty twos? Because there was no impact from the things. Uh, uh, those guns would have, you know, like they shot a guy in an arm when he gets back up. No, and one of those things hits you. It could nearly blow, blow your arm off, folks, or blow a hole in your stomach. They, they were shooting walls with them, little tiny. Kat-tat, kat-tat. So part of it is this was supposed to take place. Well, what, what was it? They 1873. Yeah. So wait a minute. Was that when they first landed, and this was later, or was it actually supposed no, to? be No, it, it takes place in 1873. Uh, basically, it's it, part. Of it was written by. Uh, I think it's a series of graphic uh, comic book novels. Okay, for people look forward to a second movie if this one makes any money and according to what we've been reading today it's not going to well you know that's one of it is this movie by itself could just be a standalone or they could recreate the others yeah there wasn't i mean you see him basically riding off into the sunset yeah well he's a he's an alien fighter though yeah but uh but putting daniel craig in a daniel craig may be able to ride a horse but this guy cannot ride a western horse on a western saddle Ah, I mean, this, what makes you say that? Well, because the way he was riding his horse, you would get such, you'd get so many carbuncles on your rear end. It'd be unbelievable. He, he was bound, He would ride with, well, ride with the reins in his left hand, his right arm down by his side, 
And then, you know, the, the fancy writing other than one thing was all done from the backside, and the stuntman was doing that writing for him. Uh, because also, it was a different writing style. Yeah, it was just like I, uh, I, I was talking the other day of, uh, with uh, it was Clint Walker was talking about the fact that you know, he used to love these westerns. He said, because you know, if you're in the business and they ask you, can you ride a horse? Oh, yeah. Can you shoot a gun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said that they would stick uh, Cheyenne with all of these actors that had never been on a horse or fired a gun in their life. And then they, they, they get up on their horse and they do nothing but hold a saddle horn during the during the riding sequences because they were afraid they were going to fall off. And they couldn't get their guns out, so they'd have to put... They do the green screen stuff behind them so they could look like they were riding the horse with the gun. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, but, uh, it, it was bad. I mean, uh, it, it looked up... They, instead of shooting it like it was uh, a classic western everybody knows, they basically shot it uh, like it was a 70s cheap ass movie. Okay, what happened was, during the 70s, they decided they were going to change the way, you know, they become the anti-hero became the hero. You know, the bad guy would ride in, okay, uh, it started with Clint Eastwood, but Clint Eastwood was not a bad guy, Clint Eastwood was just a gunfighter. Gunfighters could be good guys because, uh, like Wyatt Earp, they were, you know, town marshals or things like that, but Clint Eastwood was not a criminal, you know, and uh, neither was... You know, uh, the character that, um, that the only criminal in the movies they had were the bad guys. Yeah, but this guy, okay, he was wanted and his name was all over the posters. Yeah. However, it's like uh, he didn't remember anything. I know, he didn't remember anything, but everybody everybody knew him, but he, he didn't know himself. But um, still, but in the 70s, they went like... Uh, they, they basically changed the whole guns and holsters people wore. All of a sudden, nobody had any bullets on their belts. They had rifles that didn't exist in a time period. Like, when, you know, everybody had oh. I mean, the rifles. They, they Okay, those Winchesters were few and far between that they were shooting at people. Oh, really? They had lots of sharps, and they had, the, they had Spencers. And didn't you say you thought you saw Olivia with contacts in her Oh, yeah, I saw when they got a close-up on her and showed her contacts. There was a lot of, uh, okay... This movie was so full of okay. They used um, they used a zoom lens, and when you use a zoom lens, you can't do a pan right to left fast with a zoom lens. I've told people about that in 3D. That's how you can tell. First of all, if you're using a 3D camera versus a standard camera, you cannot swish pan with a 3D camera because a 3D camera has a has a fixed lens. But they would basically oh. And I never saw so many out of focus shots in my life on a major film. Well, even yeah, I was really kind of surprised. Even the opening shot. I mean, obviously, it's it's kind of like they know better than that. I mean, I looked at the style. I mean, it's almost like watching like a one of the older westerns on the big screen. Yeah. But it's like they have better equipment than that now. Oh, they have better equipment than that. Okay. I mean, so, I mean we had digital. I mean, we're talking the equipment was superior equipment. I'm not talking. Look at the end of the movie. You're going to see the equipment that they were using. Mm -hmm. But they uh, basically, the young cinematographers are hung up on on a, uh, on a zoom lens. I was told the first thing when I went to film school. I mean, I'd been in the film business for a long time before I went to college. I went to film school. My my film teacher told me he said, "If I catch one of you with a zoom lens in my class, I'll kick your ass out." So do you think part of this this style was is they were trying to recreate a different style? No, that's all they know. That's what they know. These are guys, John Favreau. He grew up, okay, he, this, we're talking the 70s is 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. These guys that are making these movies grew up watching these cheap ass, washed out. And he's trying to recreate it. He's trying to recreate what he thinks is a Western. That's not a Western. My father, I, mean, I, I can actually, I, um, I mean, I, I sat down at a table with some of the bigger, I mean, I was with Roy, I sat down with Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, um, and a bunch of other the, the old cowboy actors and my father was talking to him and he said these are damn Easterns Easter they're Easterns it's what a person from the East thinks the Wild West is oh, you mean like everybody around the world thinks California or actually thinks LA is like Hollywood yeah yeah. LA is like Hollywood, uh, you know, but... Uh, and reality TV is reality. But a Western is not real. True. Okay, they would deliberately put automobiles and things in, in, West, in Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, other people's Westerns in the 40s and early 50s, and even the late 30s, because oh, they, really? it wasn't real. 
they realized it wasn't real. None of these people, other than, okay, Gene Autry was a, he was a telegrapher. Roy Rogers was a, his idea of, okay, he actually could ride horses because he grew up on a farm. Oh, so they kind of just put it in there for the fun of it. They put them in. Because, because, and because obviously people knew that it wasn't. Everybody in the United States knew you didn't have Indians during World War II with bows and arrows shooting at people with automobiles in the scene. Well, you would think so. But but the rest of the world, though, uh, thinks otherwise. But um, oh, no, it's, it's just like everybody looking at Star Trek, where they're looking at the the movies and they're thinking that that's reality. Yeah, but it's yeah. not. It's um, it's the it's what Fabro and other people grew up with. Um, uh, Spielberg knows different because Spielberg grew up. In the era when you know that you know he grew up in the Errol Flynn, the John Wayne, the mm-hmm. Gary Cooper, he knows what a western looks like. None of these people would have ever been caught dead in something like that. Well, so what do you think happened with the movie then? Well, I mean, or maybe um, they just focused okay. on the special effects. Well, the special effects, like I said, my father was from the part of the film business. My father was an actor, but my father actually was on the second unit side. They, they actually, I at times, I actually saw the pots that they were using to set the explosives off in. <laughs> that is how bad this thing well, is put together. that's you have a good eye on it. You were also the one that noticed Olivia had in contact. I know. I also noticed the fact that when the woman that got out of the fire had a great big wide rear end, Olivia Wilde is sort of a little tiny little thing. So she has, she didn't do her body justice, but you know. I know. I also knew that there the woman so from the back, woman. but the woman from the backside climbing a tower at the end, I mean a spaceship at the end, was also the same woman that came out of the tower, great big broad rear end. Oh. But which brings us to that spaceship. You can tell them about the spaceship. Which, which spaceship? The one. The gal the, was the, so freaking off. Oh God, yeah. Well, you know, okay, so like these alien flying machines, right? So when they first come in, and the first one lands and okay into the ground I'm, I'm just looking at it going it looks so big when it was above them and then how did it look so little on the ground because they didn't they uh okay there's no excuse for this because industrial light and magic did a lot of this stuff yeah and they know better totally no excuse the other part i was kind of curious about is like when the big alien spaceship is in the ground you're going what okay that's okay you have to see the movie for some of this to make sense okay so when you're watching it towards the end okay it looks like the thing is built around it, and then the core is, is coming up out of the, the I don't know, the cake scene. It looks like the core is coming out and going up in the sky. Oh, it just like keeps it. going, and it right. keeps going, it keeps but, going. But when you look outside of it, like you're out, okay, out of Just like, it, it was like three football fields down the ground. Or how did it get in the ground without disturbing the canyon? Yeah, because that much force it would have messed with the canyon. And it was a it was a spacecraft one one designed to fly in an atmosphere that has so much stuff on.